Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. Quite a while back, I made a video about a restoration of a Lohmann diesel engine. My own Lohmann diesel. I have two of them, so you might be a little bit confused about that. But they are actually not the same engine. They look a lot alike, but it's not the same. You might already now see that it's in pieces once again. But off camera, I fitted it to the bike. I fitted all the cables and so on. It was difficult to fit the cable for the variable adjustment. So what I did was that I pushed the sleeve a little bit out, a little bit out just to get to that set screw, just a little bit out of the, uh, of the actual bore. And then I just tried to to push start the bike just a little bit, just to see if everything worked and the compression was variable, because that's quite feelable. If you put the high compression on, it will just lock the wheel like a brake, and low compression, it will start to spin. But it made a horrible sound straight away. And what happened was that this is the mechanism that turns with the cable. This was the one that I took out, pushed out a little bit to fit the cable into that set screw. Uh, when you turn the handlebar, it will lower or raise the compression by moving the entire sleeve which the piston uh, rides in. You might notice this and this. These are for some uh, dowels. I don't know if they are called dowels, but it's these pieces of metal that sits in here and make sure that the entire sleeve doesn't just spin but moves in and out. Uh, unfortunately, and it's a bit surprising, it's made so that if you just pull this out a little bit from the actual cylinder to fit the cable, they fall out. And they fell out and fell into the crank casing, uh, which did this to my little piston. <laughs> These are really rare parts. I have cleaned up the inside once again. I took everything apart. And then I was lucky because there is a company in Germany I'm going to put a link in the description, because it, that's nice to know. They have a lot of Lohmann parts available for some reason. Uh, they sent me a piston, which didn't fit. And then they just made another one that should fit, because mine is apparently a little bit smaller than the other ones. This hopefully fits. This is not cheap. I paid, I think, around 80 euros, and then uh, around 100 euros for this. So I really hope it doesn't happen again. So it's very important to fit that cable before fitting everything back together, otherwise it will just happen again. Um, I'm not going to show you the process of fitting all this back together, because I did that in the previous video. I just wanted to tell you the story, and then I will take you back in a bit, when everything is back together and on the bike, and it's ready to be test-driven test for the first time. I hope see you in a bit. So there we go, the Lohmann engine is back on the bike. I have now installed the new piston and made sure that I put the cable in without moving the piston sleeve too far out. What I want to do now is to mix up a fuel. I'm going to mix up something that I was advised to mix from someone who has had played around with these quite a lot. He also told me that he could not get any power out of this either, but <laughs> maybe it's better than the other one. So I'm going to take one liter of this lamp oil stuff, kerosene I guess is the correct translation, but I don't know for sure. Then I'm going to add in four millimeters of Satan, Satan, Satan booster, I might pronounce that wrong, and 4% of uh, two-stroke oil. That is the recipe that I was advised to use. If this doesn't work out right, I think I'm going to add in some petrol to make it easier to start, because the main problem of, of this moped is starting. Because there is no glow plug, it's just relying on the compression alone and the heat generated from that. It's variable compression, of course, so you can get it really cranked up until it starts and then crank it down a little bit, because you don't want it to be pre-detonating either. So, uh, so I'm going to do that. I'd say that's just about there. That's just around there. And then I'm going to mix it up. If you know me and my channel, you will know that I always wear gloves. I just forgot this time, and this time it got really dirty, so I'm going to go in and wash my hands. I learned from past experience with the Loman that preheating it is a good idea. Of course, it's possible to start it without, 
because uh, the compression alone will generate some heat, but it takes a long time, it's very hard. Um, this is another reason why I could add some petrol to the fuel to make it easier to start, but that will also lower the maximum compression that you can run it at because it will pre-detonate, so you will have less power, I guess. So this varies the compression, and this varies the drip rate of the uh, dripper. Let's try. extremely slow but better than the other one we are actually riding up a hill now and I'm almost not using the bike part of it as you can hear. <laughs> it's incredibly hard to find the correct settings between compression and uh, grip rate. Much great stuff can be said about the Lohmann diesel engine. It is revolutionary, even by today's standard, in my opinion. The tiny, tiny engine with the variable compression. I'm just going to shut this fuel line like that. It is really revolutionary. The compact design, the universability of it, that you can use it for different kind of stuff, not only your bike. It's, it's very, very brilliant. The mechanic stuff in this is so basic, yet so complicated. It's just a clever piece of design. Another great thing is that it is, it is actually helping me getting into a little bit better shape because it is quite horrible at being a moped, to be honest. <laughs> it's, it is possible for it to pull itself on straight roads for a bit. And it's also helping me a little bit when I get the settings correct, when I drive it. It's, it's like an electrical bicycle. You have to help it along a little bit unless it's completely perfect conditions. Well, I'm not gonna say it's the Lohmann diesel's, diesel engine's fault per se, but I have heard a lot about these engines and I have talked to quite a few people who had these engines and tried to make them run right. And there's a pretty, pretty big consent among all of them that this engine at least is very hard to get running uh, and running right. But this was the greatest test that I have done on one of these so far. The other one, which is a slightly different engine design, it wasn't running as good as this one. This is actually pretty easy to start once it's a little bit warm. Uh, I can actually start it by pulling the bike. Um, that's a great improvement. One thing that I noticed is that I have to run the compression quite low to make it run. Uh, I'd say about 10% of the capability, maybe 20 I'm not sure that the cables are completely set up right, but if I crank the compression up, it just doesn't want to run. It just 
pretty much locks the engine up. I actually made a short video about this engine, or the other engine actually, on Instagram where I tried to make it run and it stopped because I cranked the compression up and everyone is commenting that, uh, that it locked up. It didn't lock up, it's just very high compression. So if it cuts out without a flywheel, this pretty much doesn't have a flywheel in there. It's very tiny at least. The tire, in my mind, is what keeps the momentum going. So the bike has to run to even have it at idle. So if it cuts out at high compression, it will just be zoom, and then it stops. Uh, anyway, I think the compression has is quite low on this fuel, so I think it's a bit unstable maybe. I think if I could make, make it run right at higher compression, I would make more power. But anyway, it is a success and it's very interesting to work on this bike. I'm currently I'm having a, a bit of a cold, which is lasting for quite a long time. And that's great when I work on the low man because I can't smell the horrible diesel smell all over the place. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I am pretty sure I will be back with the low man with other kinds of fuel experiments because that is pretty much what I have to work on now. Finding the perfect fuel for this because it could be fun to make it run so I could actually take it on a trip without completely drenching myself in sweat. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.